This is such a great dating sim. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know that this might sound a little strange, but I think we might be, um... I think I might like Pop! Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Miriam's feeling it. She's feeling it for Pop. Hey, man. Like him. Like, like, like? There you go. I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast. But there's something about him. I like uh, him. I like, like him. I like him do riff too. We got to talking after class. And he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only three? Not only that, but he founded a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because he put on a hat one time and thought it looked cool. But Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with his new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend university cooking school at academia for learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. Oh, You're my. You're great, but why would he, he be into you, I Mine. guess? I did ping it. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient. Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Da -da 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 -da. So, this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, oh, never mind. a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, hey, don't tell hey, me. Hey, uh, so I, I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me in the gate when I arrived. I mean, Later, when I cooked with, with them, a very strange feeling came over oh. me, and the flavor was unlike anything I had ever tasted. Yo, I, here. Think I think yeah, yeah, I'm here. being very liberal with the meaning of spices okay, he's, uh, here. He's fine. He's be nasty, is this new agent? Yeah, Brian, this is a new agent. I'm playing the Colonel Sanders KFC dating sim. It's really good. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking. So we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anybody. Cough. Faber, cough. Thank you. Please, 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 please. It would mean the world yeah, to me. No one has to know it came from right. from Colonel <laughs> Sanders. Tell me the ingredients Colonel Sanders told you. Make up a fake ingredient. What should I do? Good job. Should I betray the trust of my bestie? Well, I guess it wouldn't be trust because I – wait. Colonel Sanders trusts me, so I shouldn't betray Ooh. Colonel Sanders' trust. Yo, maybe finish this? He's it low, wouldn't harm but... if I say yeah, right? Nah, maybe I make up oh. a fake ingredient. I don't know, man. It's hard to say. Fine, let's make it up. You can even think of a fake ingredient. Man. I don't know. How about... It was yeah, Eye of Newt. I know. Place, sounds like some kind of potion, but yeah. Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing as you... You figure out... You uh, figure that you've satisfied her curiosity. Her heart, move on. is getting fucked. However... She immediately turns around and does some uh, a thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. At Fiora, is, I Fiora has thought. divine thunder. Before no. you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh my god, Colonel Sanders, you cutie. Uh, I don't have every it time, on Every time he shows up. It's Colonel Sanders! He's arriving at school. Look at this horse. It's so fucking cute, dude. Oh my god. It's such a pretty little horse. He's so cute. I'm going to keep it on the screen for a while because I like that horse. It's also got a chicken saddle. Look at that chicken saddle. 
That's dope AF. <clears throat> Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. I don't think it matters either way. Should I run to him or should I just stand back and admire him? We should stand back and admire. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Look how majestic he is. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short <gasps> horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. I wish he would smack me like that. God, I wish I would, he would smack me like that. You're so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Man, what a beautiful fella. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. Man, he just makes me feel so real. What a beautiful horse of full beaut you have i mean what a horse of full beaut you have i mean dang it that's what i just said being a good friend miriam tends to cover for you oh bernie sanders just gets really nervous around people they like Ugh. what this is not helping i mean they got food poisoning and we were and we're up all night oh colonel sanders's face it was gruesome you should have seen it oh colonel she gives you a wink and a smile as if to say situation handled can't blame a girl for trying and with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes, bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. Dude. This girl's, like, fucking skirt is way too short for some school standards here. In fact, if this dialogue box wasn't over her legs, it would be kind of... Damn, she's thick, though. She like... She, like, real thick, thick, you know? Anyway, you try to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Ashley, why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look. Should I call him out straight up, or should I just fucking sneak a deek it? Maybe I sneak a deek it. Ugh. Uh, we'll just try sneak it. You sit near the rivals, but look at their faces. But your back, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. Whoa. However, he notices you eavesdropping. Uh-oh. Oh. You try to cover your tracks and imp improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's uh, it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Dude, she's got huge tits. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, aren't you? You make the rules? Fucking Ashley. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is that they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book. Just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. Hey, that's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and its cont contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying, just studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins as him, at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Babe, babe, says Clank. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Ran Van Van's meaty foot. Okay, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzz, wow. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. Damn, this thing looks like it could kick some ass, though. Like this machine robot thing. Damn. <laughs> this pose, dude. 
No, your mother was a stand mixer. Oh, shit. He's sad. Oh, my God. Our little stovetop monster is sad. Werbzz. Now he's mad. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shots Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Oh, damn, Ashley. Ashley. Oh, my God. Look at her face, dude. Ashley. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. But I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse. Right? Come on, Colonel. Don't fall for this. Look at his, his scepter. His chicken scepter. I was going to call it a staff, but this is a scepter, okay? Like, if I've ever seen one, that's a scepter. Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Ashley. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's, he's also a dog. Sprinkles. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. And my tiny little legs are very, very tired. He's a cute little corgi. Poor guy. Poor Professor Sprinkles dog. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without f further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, that chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help. But daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Bernie Sanders. Naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A, si a glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? Uh-oh. What's a shimmering pepper? What's a... I don't want to eat a dog biscuit. Water seems lame. Let's eat the pepper. A brightly covered pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. Unlikely. I'm, I'm well-versed in heat. Uh-oh. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the as you trip through the universe. Uh oh, I'm tripping, dude. I'm fucking tripping balls, man. Ghost of student, my friend. Ooh. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is. I cough, cough, cough. As I was saying, to fill your destiny, all you must do is... Cough, cough. Sorry, I think I still got some spice in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy! <coughs> you must! You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Goes to suit. Oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper... Oh, God. That pepper was the last kind of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever! You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. These fucking assholes. Today's lunch will be prepared... Via timed competitive cook off. Look at these poses, dude. Look at this. Look at this fucking butcher knife, man. She's dangerous, man. I don't, I don't, I don't like this girl. Even though she's got this window cut out for boobies, we appreciate that. And this guy's got side cutouts for obliques. I don't know, man. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time. Step him. Tell him you're on. Should we challenge him? Let's fucking challenge him. I hate these guys. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on a table, so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. 
Ha, <laughs> good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Bernie Sanders. I'll wait for your perform. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports sing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts in your face, slashing the words, Timer ready! That's what I'm talking about! Aroo! Says Sprinkles. Bernie Sanders, I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me. In case anybody was wondering, I hope it manages to such, this message to set you to victory. Ashley. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. Ugh. I will defeat you myself. Oh, wait, she's got a fucking, like, metal chain with this shit on. What is this? This heart. It's a heart on it. Damn, this is, like, super tight around her legs. You see this? It's cutting off circulation. I think it's cutting off circulation, and she's not getting enough blood to her brain. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravies on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. Yeah, we should impress him. Let's do it. It's time to boil some food for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. It always boils. What temperature does water boil at? 100 C, 100 F. It always boils 100 seconds after you turn the heat on this one. That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Waiter gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipes, recipes uh, exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? 10, 7, 11. <gasps> it must be 11. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've gotten some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor, vigilance, trust, or gratitude? Uh, Gratitude? That's right! You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are ready for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on this advice and draw energy from that place. Yeah! Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where did it come from? A small town where your dreams are brewing. The shoulder of Orion, deep beneath the surface of the Pacific. Oh no! Aru! Wait, did I pick it in time? You try to shout out the noise in the arena and on, focus on your cookie. What is the second? What is the sound of success? Silence, sizzling, bubbling, sizzling. That's wrong. What? Don't make me get the spray bottle. Oh shit! Next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Barney Sanders. <laughs> he's actually cheering you on. Yeah. Which will be awesome. Except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now, all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Look at this beautiful horse. It's so cute. Such a cute horse. Oh. Oh, no. Get your mind back in the competition. <laughs> oh, shit. Grr. You're you shredded on dessert island with only a dessert, dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hook. <laughs> I can't focus on this competition. Curtis Sanders is too, Curtis Sanders is too sexy. I know, right? You know what? Should you be focused on the challenge? You're far falling behind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What does that have anything to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate base business? <laughs> woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ishle has already been plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. You to take up time. You toss your biscuit dough in a mix stand mixer as you do to make up time. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah, yikes! Zzz. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but Bernie Sanders does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough no when it's mixed properly. There's an easy way, and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everybody talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand in the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Bernie Sanders, no! But you're not fast enough. And your hand gets stuck. Stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spitting beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Ah! Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. How often? What you often find is that the easy way can turn out to be much, much more difficult. Everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. 
It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply cannot go on. It's broken. I broke my hand by putting it in a mixer. Why did I put my hand in a mixer, dude? What am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? Aw, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be a fair comp to compare the two on account of Bernie Sanders' injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Dude, this looks really good. Like, I would fucking eat this right now. Even though I hate Ashley. I hate her. Sexy demon girl. She's not a demon girl, but she's evil. What do you think? What do you think this is? These are like... Like magic blueberries or something? Anyway. I was going to ask Bernie Sanders to do the honors, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer with del delicate hot chocolate slice might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. That is, that does look like a very strong, steady hand. Why, why is it that... Is this like a, is this like a sexy pose? Is this like a pose? Maybe we should start posing like this. Just hold your glasses. Even though they're being supported by your nose and your ears. Anyway. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry galay. Galay? Galay? I don't even know how to pronounce any of that. Look at this thing! Ah, oh, no! She's too good! Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Ashley? Oh, you. Hee <laughs> hee. As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Should I internalize the rage I feel or put myself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley? Damn. I don't want to be a jealous hoe, though. Am I a jealous hoe? I'm not a jealous hoe. Come on, man. I ain't no jealous hoe. Internalize it. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash. And they fall off of your face. Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Oh my god. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance. Not to mention your crispy, fried brow. You run to the quad to be alone. Look at Colonel Sanders' face. He's like, what the fuck is going on? And look at Ashley's face. Fucking slut. I hit her. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from this. Or from him. But he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I kind of like that saying. I'm going to start using it. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed in anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before. You enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Well, the handsome, sure. I was born that way. Same. Fucking same. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. Same. Fucking same. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. Obstetrician. OB. OBGYN. I was passionate about justice, 
but I failed as a lawyer. Is that why he's so fucking old, dude? I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. Look at that vein on his on his fucking temple. Man, he's fucking feeling it. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it eh, but it all hasn't always been. I think I'm wearing my shirt inside out. The buttons are on the inside. I only just now noticed. Because I was reaching up for my ribbon tie, like Colonel Sanders is. And, uh... And the, the buttons are on the inside. I'm wearing my shirt inside out. Great. I am a failure. This game and me are like... I connect to this game on like a spiritual level. <sighs> People see my delicate ribbon tie. Oh, my delicate ribbon tie. I welcome beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now. But it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolve that. Uh, I resolved then. That I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Misdeeds? What did he do wrong? Yay! Oh, fuck, Pop, dude. Fuck this guy. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster! Borko? It is I. I know I said I would be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook. Precisely. I had <laughs> Precisely. I procured a book for my a copy for myself, but something along somewhere along the way, I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful sheriff, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear, I will be there. Well, it sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Burn Sanders together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway, and we can discuss... Wait, his hideaway. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. He's got an elevator or something. Wait, no, actually, what is that? I don't know what that is. I can't tell. But look at him. This is him as a baby. What the fuck is this? Oh, camel. What is this? Kentucky? Kentucky. This chicken, what is, is this a comb? Oh, I guess he cuts the comb his hair. Look at this beautiful fucking view, dude. But, why does he need a fireplace? And the window, whatever this thing he is, the uh, garage. Why is this open also? It's kind of bothering me. Because, like, he's just heating the outdoors then. Like, what is he doing? He's just contributing to global warming. Anyway, Bernie Sanders. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. 
Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perks up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? We should reveal it. I trust him. I trust this man. Wait. This music. So beautiful. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. Yeah, coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <laughs> His Lux hideaway. Look at this. <gasps> Magnificent. Together, you chow down on the creamy slaw. Mm, give me your creamy slaw. Until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. Oh, he's crying, dude. He's tearing up. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure. Why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate the memories and emotions. Tap on an item. Discover more about the colonel. <gasps> so many items. Let's look outside. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading into the world on the quest to avenge my dad? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Ooh. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window, a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. <laughs> Tap an item to discover more about the colonel. This chicken. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic. It's real! Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. <laughs> Tap an item to discover more about the colonel. Scented candle. A scented candle. You pick up the and try and identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69. <laughs> 69. No. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Mm. Dude, I don't know what it is. Tap on an item and discover more. What is this? A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silver in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Please. Tap on an item and learn more. What is this? You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off, the, the, off his hand and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in the scent. Mm. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further... No, I want to look at the other stuff! You hear Colonel Sanders returning. He's a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh, crap, the jacket. You decide that now is your moment to make a big move. You tell him you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. Oh, that's a little too awkward. It's cold. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. Oh, poor guy. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you a pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes, Bernie Sanders? I honestly think this might 
be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Z, 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 Z. You wake to beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Do you really need this on when it's fucking daytime, dude? Do you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Blank. In some jurisdictions, blank isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Wait, what if KFC had an illegal ingredient and this is their way of saying that, like, admitting it in a video game? That'd be kind of weird. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's only a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. He has a simple breakfast I just whipped. Oh. Oh. It's meticulous. It's so beautiful. Isn't it so beautiful? I mean, this looks great, right? It looks good. Have you banged the colonel yet? No, damn it. Does this look like I'm banging the colonel? I slept over at his house, though. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting for you to ask an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Take him down a peg? Flatter him. Oof. Such confidence. Such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no 